So, hello and welcome to today's Woodworking Wisdom. Today, we're going to look at a small DIY project. I've done a few things lately that maybe some of you are going to go a little bit more complicated. So I've been kind of saying, can you do it real basic? For those of you at home that maybe want to make a few things, you've got a cordless drill, pocket hole type stuff. Let's have a go, see what we can do. So what we're going to do, small sofa arm type table. All right, so stuff's brought in our measurements for a sofa arm. And we're going to make her a table. That's the plan anyway. So we've got a piece of plywood. We've got our measurements. I've drawn up rough sketch and cutting lists from there. And my aim really is to get it out of that one piece of ply, hopefully. So we'll see how we go. So first job really I'm going to go and do is cut the plywood up so we've got it into the pieces we need. So I'll be back in a sec. All right, so back to the machining. Um, what we just done, in reality, cut it up with a bandsaw. Why? I just don't have table saw at the moment. Some of you might not have table saw. You go jigsaw, bandsaw, uh, kept the guides nice and low, nice sharp blade, got it nicely set up. And then we've gone back to that favorite thing of mine, shooting board. It's not just for good furniture, you know. You can use it for anything. All right, so your shooting board's really good for those sort of things. Just to clean up those bandsaw marks, get things nice and square. At this stage, that was our sheet of plywood. So we cut it up. Now, I'll change glasses. What we got? Let's have a quick look on here. I want to label things. Now, instead of writing on the ply, I'm going to write on some masking tape. Just so I don't mark it. Last things to clean up. So, top. These two down here are two and three. They relate to the part numbers on the unit. And then we have top would be the two side. That's about one look. One there. I got that there. And then number two is the other side. I think it's that one. All right. That just helps you know where you are, all right? This is, I'm going to put a bot, all right? Just makes it easier that you can get what you want. Now at this stage, hopefully, we don't need those. So we're just, no, okay, all right, just. So we've got our components that we need. Now, this stage, I'm even going to do something weird even before we get anywhere with the screws. We're going to look at what we've roughly got. So we have our side, this is the big one. Goes down there, our bottom is on there, our top, let's have a quick look on sides. Those two are the ones that are the same. And this is just giving us a scope of where everything is going at this layout point now. And then that one's down there. Right. So just as a layout, we can see where that roughly goes. Now, I don't know if you need to come in. You can have a little scan of that. We'll show you what's happening. So with our layout, we've got obviously our shape. We're going to pocket hole it just as something as an alternative way of jointing this. No fancy dovetails, no mortars and tenons. Quick, simple, can be in reality screwed together with a joint that's more hidden, so less visible. So where am I going to do? On the frame here, I've got to come down for there. So actually my pocket holes will be along here. So again, instead of marking it with, I'm going to put a tape line down the bottom there. All right, and I'm going to do a pencil line across it so I know it is that way. One, let's move that board over. This one, the sofa is here. So let's do the screws on that inside face so they won't show again. So we're going to lay that one down. Now along there. All right. Bring that. We're reforming things. This one's going on to the top. So again, we don't really want it showing from the outside. 
You could easily draw on your board. I know we're going to sand things. Let's do it there. This just shows up better on the camera as well, really. That's our top going in. And then we got this side that needs to go up through as well. So let's do that. Who'd have thought putting masking tape on could be so difficult? Okay, so that gives us our framework of where we're gonna go. Then what we're gonna do, let's just lay these down so I don't play dominoes. So we said we're gonna use pocket hole. So some of you, what is pocket hole? In reality, it's a screwed together type of joint. Let's just grab wood screw. So the screws have like a washer head, that's about pulling things up. Most of them have plain shank again, that's about pulling things together, not pushing it apart. It will drill a pilot hole. So we have a special drill. This has a narrow tip, which drills your pilot hole, a bigger diameter, which is allowing for the 10 mil, and then a collar stop. That's quite important. Hex shank gives you better drive. Okay, so we've got our drill. Now in the pocket hole jig here, we can adjust it depending on the material thickness. So on this side here, there is a scale. Over there. All right, 12, you go up, I think it's up to 30. We have a line. We've got 18 mil thick material. So I've just moved it about a little bit. We've got the knob that will come round. It needs to go into that hole, which locks off with the line saying 18. Simple, eh? So let's lock those off. I'm gonna just set this up on the back of the bench. We clamp it down, it's gonna make it easier. I might put the extraction nozzle on, get rid of the waste as well. Less, less aggro that way. So we'll put that back to there. Then on each of our boards, we need to put a little bit of a mark to know where we're actually locating within this to drill those holes. Not a roll, what we're gonna do, I want a line. I'm just gonna bounce to this side. I know I'm about the width in of the ruler. So a small line on there. Gonna use the raw width to give me an idea of where I want to be there, okay? We then, I don't want to move things, so let's go to three, five, 20, 160 is 463, 520, one, two, 20, 110, so 410 is the center. It's good this getting older stuff. Going to move that about. Going to mark up exactly the same on the other side. So we know we want to be, that's our upright. That one there, we can do that as a little cross in the corner. I can extend my line good enough there. I get really sneaky in a minute, we'll move that line down, project it. Let's do the same one here now. There's nothing to stop me apart from I've got a long way to come up. So we'll stick with this. bring it up to there because then we're more on the bench and you guys will see more. I just want to clamp it down in place. You could screw it down to the bench if you want. No. So hoover hose we can connect on there as well. Let's see if we can bring that back. But nothing in the vice at the moment so that will work quite nicely just to hook that out of the way. On our board, let's take them first. Our bottom line, I just want to do now. On the jig here, there's ridges on that orange platform coming up parallel lines. All right, so we have these nice parallel lines going down. They're going to tell me where I'm actually going to have things now. Got a parallel line on the outside. I'm going to line that up to here. That's good. I can come, I think, to the middle point. So I'm using on there, up to that middle line there. Trying to get things nice and square in here if I can. So in here we've got an adjustable toggle type clamp. So this we can wind in and out, wind it back. So depending on the material thickness, we can clamp it in securely. So let's bring that back to there a minute. I'm just gonna line the board up. 
bring it over. Got my weight directly above where we want to drill. Clamp it in. Done. Okay, so we know that will work. Next little stage, I just want to check something else. We need to get our drill. So our drill, I've got to set this up now. So we've got the clamp set, we know where we're going there, we've got a height set. The height's important before you try and set the drill. So I'm going to drop the drill into here. On the top of this, we have an adjustable collar. I can undo it, I can move this. So visually, I want to look across the bottom here and there should be about two to three mil gap. Now there's a good guide for you, how about the Allen key? That thickness is a three mil Allen key off the top of my head, so that's gonna give me about what I want there. Not quite going all the way down through, that's great. Lock it off. So we set our depth for the drill. So we're gonna locate first board, we're gonna do there, I'm gonna look over the top, I'm trying to line up with my center. Again, I've got my weight over the top. Make sure I don't have my hand in underneath where that clamp's gonna come up to. Clamp it in, done. Held, nice and securely. Then we want something to drill with. The cordless drill, onto there. We don't want hammer, we will want it on drill mode, fast speed. I've just put the hoover on for the extractor. We're going to do this one out here. Down a bit, draw it back. Down to that collar. First board done. So we've drilled. They don't quite come all the way through, so you're not going to get a hole here yet. Get that in a sec. Nice clean hole coming down. We have location in the bottom where the drill will go through. And the tip of the screw is actually designed to drill that out. So I've got the first one. Got a little bit of repetitive stuff to do now. Got the other boards just to do. So I've got a nicely drilled hole. So we've got two near the centre, one either side. So down in here, actually on the jig, this is an aluminium block, aluminium to you guys out in the States. In here there's a hardened steel insert that guides the drill down nice and accurately. Obviously there's the extraction point, and that gets rid of that waste very effectively. So if you're going to do something like this, definitely worth looking at. Having that extracted to get rid of it and suck it out of the way directly. And obviously this drills down, presents everything at an angle, that's how these are going to work. Also in increases the strength because you're not pulling in as such parallel, you're crossing the grain fibres a bit more, especially in real timber. Okay, so we're going to start to in reality glue some of this up. I'm trying to look at which way maybe we want stuff. We know that's got to be there, that's got to be the inside, so we've got to be round that way. I'm going to go on there. Now, I bought this other bit of board into play. This was one of the offcuts, it's the same width. It'll give me the scope. I can use this just as a clamping board. Right, just to hold that in place. What difference does that mean? I don't have to work as hard. All right, it's that simple. Don't tell anyone that, right? Then we want some glue. So, silicon glue tray. These are fantastic because you can pick all that up. You can even have competitions between family members to see who does this because everyone loves doing this. We want some glue. How much are we gonna want? Could even on this one coming out nicely. Let's do. We've got our glue. We now need some screws. So just got a big assortment in here. So we want, I think, a 30 mil fine thread. So probably that. Okay, that's a coarse thread. So people are going to say they're a difference. So coarse thread is better for softwood, fine thread is better for hardwoods. Just kind of going through the box and trying to have a bit of a, a little bit of a look, show you the different threads. Coarse one, fine one. All right. 
Now, we're going to put our board. We want to be able to get to the hole, so we've got to turn it over. Drop it in here. I'm going to slide it down the board we've got. I want to wiggle it left and right a little bit. Line things up. Then I want to stop it moving. Check how things are aligning there. Got a little bit of glue out on that far side we're getting a second to there. Don't want the clamps massively over tightened on this stage. I've gone finger tight, literally. Oh, that thing's going to be able to pull down. Then we want our screws. Now again on here you have fast and slow. We're on slow speed, that's good. I'm going to take the torque settings down a minute. Don't want loads and loads of torque for this. So I can drop that into the middle hole. One. Bring it up a bit. Let's see what the other one does now. Into the hole. Good. Middle ones. Better. And then out to the other side. Or in the central hole. There, there it is. And we can undo it. So we've got the first one screwed up onto there. Now we need to bring in the next board. That one's going out here. Right, nearer you guys, you'll be able to see it better. Okay, so in reality I've got nothing in between. I don't definitely need anything in between, but it's nice to have that reassurance of being able to clamp this together. I can't turn it round and clamp it as well. So I've just had a quick hunt. I start to go through, we got, oh, we got a gap. So we need something thicker. Uh, wait, a couple of these. What do we get now? That's two. You can never, it's a bit like clamps, you can never have enough rules. So now we've got three, they're rulers, not rules. Okay, so we can have that on there. That's pretty good. That brings me back to being near a flush. We can stretch our clamp, let's just see it'll go, it will. So let's get a little bit of glue. Uh, we've got outside edge. So I'm gonna put it more coming towards the outside, that's easy to wipe off. So we can spread it about a bit. I think we've got quite a bit down there. So we've got to pick our board up, turn it over now. Just as a thing now, if I don't take it off now, we might not get to it. So me just thinking of where labels are, it's gonna be difficult to reach in a minute. But I've got nothing to sand off there. Eh? I've got to put the rules in at the back, the bit of wood. That way, we got our glue on there, better double check. Bring it up, level one end. Just gonna slide everything along, I'm moving along the bench. Just pin that back in place. Got to adjust that far side, let's just see what's going on, that's good. We need to be able to get to that hole, we can get to that. Coming under there. That's not bad, that's good, we can get there. Now I'm just checking, edge bit better. Oh. Get to our holes, that's good. Screws. There it is. Well, that pulled that up. Let's just check it didn't move anything. That's okay. There you go. Bit 
bit weird almost feels like I'm working the wrong side but okay So now we're getting somewhere. So it can come off there. Should want to chamfer the edges a little bit. Okay. So I've already started to think about. I get the router. We can set the router on. We can go round. Okay. So we're going to do some of that now. Hold that nozzle up a little bit. We've set the cutter. And all we're doing is taking that very light corner off. We we'll flip it round. We can do the same again. So we've come up as far as we can. We're bridging off of this foot for stability. When we get to about here, running out, I've turned the base of the router diagonally so I get more length out of it that way. So again, it'll stretch off the corner. But actually, where we've got to now, we don't actually even need to do it right now. We could do it when we put it together. We can come up. Easy when we're done. So at this stage, I think really, let's go up through here. So we've got to come up and up around there in a minute. So, boom. All right, so we've done our chamfers round, down round, it's looking all right, okay. On here we've got the other side, we've got the top. Now the top's a fiddly one at the moment because I can bridge from here nicely. When I get to this bit of the board, I'm going to wobble with the router. Trickier to control. So we kind of know, quite simply, that there, there and there. When I get to the corner bits, it's quite easy to add stability. I've got a right angle to work around. It's that long bit in the middle. Same with this side, but I can actually route that off before we even fit it. So I can get to this. So what I'm looking at now is just those little bits where it might be more difficult to get to. I don't want to come right into the corner here and overshoot it, or you're going to get a V cut where the board joins together. So we've got to make sure we stop before that. This board I can come down around. So I'm just looking at those things. So I'm just going to finish off that little bit of routing, then we'll finish getting it joined. So we've just done that last little bit of routing, taking some of those edges off. We've got a little bit to do in a minute. So we can join a few things together now. Now that's got to be on there, so let's have a quick look, that's there. I've just taken a little bit out of the corners here. And that one's going to go on there. All right. Now, the stage which is easier for me to get to, doesn't really matter too much. So we want our backboard, that's going to help me. We want our base in there. Oh, we're pinning that one up over the top. Let's just get things lined up a little bit. And then we'll have a little bit of glue. I knew that. I did. I did. I knew it had to go that way, I promise. All right. Steph stood here laughing now, but she knows I put it on the wrong way. Look, I mean... I know, just testing to make sure you're all watching. Okay, so check my level. Have a clamp. Just to hold it together. And again, we're not trying to do too much pressure with those. They're just literally finger tight. Hold it there. This is pulled up against two, three, four. More than four now. Long reach over again. I'm going to come round a little bit. All right, so we've got a top onto there. That fits nice, that's good. Then we've got to do that last side, which that one's got to go down on here. So I'm going to block you a little bit now. That's got to go in here. All right, so again, we're up against our board. That to there. I can get to both the labels on this. This is easy enough. Checking we've got our board there, so we want the glue up on there. So 
hoping I might need to wiggle things about a little bit though. Just want to make sure that bottom board is pulled right up. Nice thing with this, you've got this lovely flat top on the top here, so I can actually get the clamp directly from behind there, set on there, and use that as a bridging point to clamp off of. So we know we're pulling the board back, but we're also pushing it with the other. So nice to do. That square top's quite good on there. Nice screws again. One, two, three. Four over here, if I can get in there. Just trying to play with my fingers in between, just see if things are flush, they feel good. Okay, good. So things have come together nice and flush on the sides. Tape will come off, look, that's less pencil lines to get rid of. Last few bits now, just got to go around with the router really. Gonna go back through here. Let's just see, I think that's gonna be a bit, oh look at that, couldn't ask for anything better. So we can prop that up. This is the bit that I didn't do all the way to the end. So there you go, this stage we need to sand it. We know that, right? We're gonna oh, go over the edges and everything, the plywood cuts a bit, a little bit fluffy, you know what it's like. So I have to sand it, I get a block sander under here. You've seen me with my chamfer block sander I've made before, two bits of wood screwed together with the abrasive through. We can sand it, we could paint it, we could oil it, do whatever you like. But it shows how quick you can make something. What we used, small router to the chamfers, that's optional, pocket hole jig, some screws, some glue, nothing that most of you can't get hold of. So quick and easy project for some of you that maybe have got less products lying about, all right? Or maybe less ability. This is a skill building thing. Maybe you want to do this with the kids. Give them some way of getting into some basic home DIY type things, okay? You can store your favorite magazines in here. You've got, you know, things like salt and pepper mills. I think we did a lighthouse for you guys. Some Jason Breach guy did those. So, you can see how easy that is to fit on your sofa arm. I mean, stuff's going to love this. I don't know what she's going to do with it. You know, she's got somewhere she can put a phone now, a glass of wine. So, all done. All right. Hope you've enjoyed. There's more woodworking wisdom coming soon. We'll see you soon. Goodbye then.